Baja is the van lifer's paradise. Which is why we left our jobs in Canada to drive our van 1,400 miles to pursue our dream of becoming full-time YouTubers by being the first to make van life sitcom <laughs> comedy shorts. Our goal? To get our channel monetized in the two months we're here. But with half our trip done, we're still far from hitting that goal. So now we gotta pull every tool from our theater background to write and produce some scripts that will hopefully make you laugh or make somebody laugh or else we're going to be stumbling back to canada as a classic broke starving artist but getting people to laugh looks like it might be the least of our concerns 2.7k in 20 minutes this is exciting babe like i think this proves our concept right here 3k babe what someone just wrote maybe don't be weird and cringe there's always haters that's online we're 25,000. yeah views. on the first video but what if that was just like a one-off the next two that i helped with they're terrible i wouldn't say it's because of you i would say oh people just aren't liking what we're doing it's okay we'll learn now i think we should enjoy the sunset and the yummy supper and Mexico. Is there some wine with my supper? I'll give you the wine if you sing Taylor Swift. Cause I go back to December all the no, time. No, not that song. <laughs> the other song. Well, you just said Taylor Swift. You didn't say which song, honey. Got haters gonna hate, 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 hate. <laughs> haters gonna shake, 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 shake. Shake it off. <laughs> shake it off. All right. Get that supper ready. I'm starving. I started this YouTube channel three years ago with some people that were just like, oh my gosh, Rebecca, you're so cringe. I'm really, I'm really not confident in my comedy writing. Little baby artist me was so upset by those comments that it totally just shut me down creatively. I'm worried that like, what if comedy is something I can't even learn? And all of that feeling that I had three years ago that made me stop posting to begin with, are all back. Then my whole dream of working together with Becca is kind of shot. Joel had made a comment that the videos he created weren't as funny. I could tell that like there was something going on under the surface so I thought let's sit down let's talk about this. Come on baby. Just wanted to see how how you felt. Babe I just don't know if I could do comedy. Why? Who's that? Whoever sat you down and said Joel you are somebody who cannot do comedy you're not funny. Who told you that? I'm gonna beat him up. Cause um, you, whenever I try to tell you a what? joke. Can we kiss that? I don't find those jokes funny. <laughs> See? Have you ever tried to learn it? I'm trying right now. I have never, ever seen you in a place where you're like, I'm gonna put my mind to something and learn this and then fail. In like a week, you're gonna be telling me, that's not how you write a joke. Do we have any friends who are like, well, we have like Spencer Stryker. He's like, he's like a real comedian. live comedian. He's a real comedian. Do you want to be doing these little sitcom shorts? It's my dream to do an awesome huge project with you. I forgot to put on my sunscreen today. I'm going to raisin like a raisin. <laughs> raisin. Raisin. I am doing this because this is Joel's dream. So I have made up a plan. I am not going to read any more comments because comments get me down. If the content is terrible, who cares? Not me, because I'm doing this for Joel. So baby, the call with Spencer's in 20 minutes. So we felt like we needed some backup. How do we be funny? Both Joel and I don't really understand comedy. So who best to call than Spencer Stryker, a real life professional comedian. Hello. Spencer! Hey. So, if you had a piece of advice for aspiring comedians, what would you tell them? I think that the biggest thing is to just not overthink what you're writing down. <laughs> I think writing down every idea and writing every day is like a big one. Like specifically with comedy, it's so difficult to find your voice as a as a comedian and like and and it takes so much time. And then I think the the third thing is just like not stopping with it. All right. Oh, that was man. fun. I'm just feeling encouraged that yes, it's gonna be a ton of hard work, but if we both put our minds to it, I'm gonna learn how to do this. Nobody calls me Joel the Renaissance Man Braun for nothing. Nobody calls you that. Ready to write some shorts? Let's do it. Sexiest part of my day.
funny part is Esme is trying really hard to succeed. Oh no, and then life's about to get chaotic. When Esme gets online haters, it's time to hunt. Setting up for a last shot of number two. Look better. Flour and sugar covered in sugar. That's a wrap. That's a wrap one too. Oh, okay, just, just, just thanks. Oh Give me five! Oh! No! We just gotta take water! Emergency. No! <laughs> we just gotta take water! <laughs> no! Our water tank just hit empty! Woohoo! That's a wrap right. on three! He has to wear super. underwear underneath his pink shorts because he thinks the pink shorts are too immodest. If you were about to get drenched for a shoot, would you just wear a white t-shirt with nothing underneath it? Healthy time! So I think this will work for the dog pee. Yeah. I think this will have the little small spore. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Finally, hopefully getting into a routine where we can start hitting our, our production goals. Ready? Baby! What? We had 140,000 views in the last week. Crazy! Woo! 140,000 views is not even close to what we need to get monetized. Honey, we need like 7 million views. Babe, we have good likes. Hey, I died. Even though I decided I would not read any of the comments and look up the analytics on YouTube, the reality is I did. In my black hole, nobody can see me. Weird AF. Well, somebody's being a little dramatic. <laughs> no way. Maybe just don't be weird and cringe. Man, I didn't even scroll that far. How the hell? All caps. <laughs> so tired of you too. I just feel like at this point, if we keep on posting, we're probably gonna keep on getting more and more comments that are just not very nice. Now, literally all we needed to do for this whole day was polish seven scripts that I had already written. But it did not go like that. I hate working on this like this, this sucks. Joel has been doing the majority of the writing and I've been busy editing, which means that when I actually read a lot of these scripts, I'm like, oh, there's, there's, it's, the vision is not connecting. There's no sitcom style. So you write, very dialogue -y. that's great, but I actually really, really, really want the style of the sitcom. I was excited about a bunch of my ideas, and to sit across from someone and ask them, okay, you've been staring at me for five minutes now, is there a single thing in this entire script that is funny? Just one thing, to have someone tell you, just sit there and say, nope. That's, it's pretty discouraging. Hey babe, shall we take a little break and head down and look at the ocean for a bit? Yeah. I think we need to clear our minds. I feel like we're gonna be posting a bunch of shorts that quite honestly, I think don't work. And the backlash we're gonna receive from these shorts, I know is going to be intense. And I don't think I'm ready for that. I'm trying really hard to have patience because this was literally me the last week, but we have to hit a stride. like. If it's not me, it's her. We were hitting an absolute brick wall, so I figured it was time we leave the computers and van behind. Something's blocking you. Are you saying it's just you're scared of hate? You have been wanting to work creatively on a project together for so long, and I want it too. Why do you want it to come in? How many brings people joy? Anytime I've gone through stuff that's hard or tough or not perfect, I've always pulled up a sitcom. Those people that need it, do you think they deserve? The content we're making, that we're gonna make in the future once we're good. Yeah, there's gonna be a learning curve. But is it worth it to push through that learning curve for them? I did a show once. Outside of the show, my entire world was like falling apart. And then I would have to go on stage and perform. I'd be standing backstage and I would just close my eyes and think, somebody else out in the audience right now is feeling as horrible as you are about life. And they have come to this play 
the same reasons you go home and watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, they've come to this place to find a bit of an oasis. And this show for them will be that oasis because they will laugh. It's a funny show. Go out there and perform. And then that thought would be enough energy to last me for the entire show. After the end of the show, I would crash, go home, couldn't look at people. There's something about the beauty of comedy in that for me and the gift that it is to give to someone else little moments where you can laugh that makes me go, this is worth it. And this is what I want to lend my voice to as a creative person. I've got an idea. Dad, you can't stop me. I can do this. I feel the most alive when I am on stage performing for people in a comedy. I don't care what you think. The shirt I wrote is at 90% retention. It's taking off. And you said I wasn't funny.